Hi, I'm David Gross from Condi Systems, back with you to share a little bit of my wisdom for sublimation success. This video is for some of the new folks that are starting to do sublimation. One of the very common questions we get when you printed your very first transfer is it doesn't look right. The colors don't look right. It doesn't look near as good color-wise as to say what you print on your other printers. Well when you print your sublimation transfer like this one, even though this one looks pretty good, um, the inks that are on the paper are sublimation inks and sublimation inks are activated with heat. So until you press the transfer and the inks turn into a gas and they go into the substrate that you're pressing to, you can't really judge the color. But you can certainly look at it and look for, for instance, the details. Um, you can look for the completeness of the image, that kind of thing. But you really can't judge, or at least I can't easily judge, what the colors are going to be. Now, with certain inks, especially the more modern inks, they do look truer to, to normal colors. But, for instance, yellow is the most powerful color in sublimation world and the effect of the Condi ICC profiles is to throttle back the yellow. So, for instance, a red on the paper is probably going to look more, more pink than it will red, because if it looks red, I guarantee you it's going to sublimate orange, because the yellow is so powerful. So what is the purpose of paper? Well, paper really has sort of one purpose, and that is it's the way we get the ink from the printer to the heat press. And so it's the transport, if you will. And so the paper really, in doing the transport, it needs to do a couple of things well. And our papers that we sell for sublimation do exactly that. Number one is it wants to make sure we have minimal dot gain. That is that the ink on the paper is, is held crisp, that we have very sharp dots. Think of what we call dot gain, where you drop ink, say on newspaper print, how it spreads out. Well, this ink on this paper, it needs to hold it very sharp. Number two is, when you do heat it up, the paper needs to release the ink, let go of it. To do that means the ink needs to be kept relatively close to the surface. If the ink seeps too far down into the paper, um, well, it's going to have a tough time releasing it. And so the sublimation papers we, we sell, um, they're very good at these things. The third characteristic of sublimation paper is it handles the heat of sublimation so that it doesn't go crazy, doesn't do anything weird, doesn't shrink or do things that would cause problems with the ultimate sublimation substrate. Now, what I want to do is I want to demonstrate one more thing, and that is, what should the paper look like after we press? So again, people call up first time and say, hey, it looks strange on the paper. What am I doing wrong? Okay, and that's because it's supposed to. It's sublimation ink. Number two is, um, when you do your very first transfer, um, what should it look like after, after you press it? And that's really a great tip because what you're expecting to see is the vast majority of ink is no longer on the paper. And so what should be left on the transfer after you press it is about 10 to 15% ink, so not much. If you have a lot of ink, that may be an indication that you're not doing something right, um, that, that either you're going way too long or way too short, but for some reason the ink is still on the paper. In other words, with the ink on the paper, it can't find a home. It doesn't have anywhere to go, so it's going to stay right on the paper. So I prepared a second transfer here with my trusted Chromalux metal to save time. I've gone ahead and pressed it, and I want to show you the results of what the paper looks like so that you folks that are new, you know, what's to, know what to expect. Now again, if you're not seeing enough ink transfer, could be because you're not pressing with enough time or temperature, possibly enough pressure. There are some circumstances that if you press way too long, the ink wants to come back out of the substrate. So let's take a closer look and let me show you what this looks like after we press. So the first thing to note is if you look outside where the metal is, um, the ink is still there. And that's because we didn't find a home for it. 
But if we go ahead and peel this off like this, you'll note that, that the vast majority of ink is gone. Um, you know, you're down to probably 15, possibly 20% ink here, something like that. Each substrate's going to vary a little bit, but the point is that there is a vast change from the outer portion that had no sublimation home to the inner portion here, okay? So, so very much a contrasting difference with, um, with what was there before. One of the questions that new folks ask, and it's good for experienced folks as well, is that when you do sublimate, how do you know if you've gone long enough? How do you know if you've done a good enough job? And the answer is actually straightforward, and that is look at the last color to sublimate, which is black. Black is the most complex set of dyes, and so if you're getting a good, rich, deep black, then you're dialed in. So if you look at this transfer in this area, you know, again, it's a little small because it's text, but it certainly looks really good to me. And, and the last point is when you're making judgments about color um, and you want to really get into it, um, make sure you've got light bulbs in your room that are full spectrum lights. I'm in, in our uh, room, our video lab, and I've got great full spectrum lights on me from the camera. And so I'm able to judge colors very well. So um, a lot of fluorescent lights in, in offices, all that, they're very poor as far as the spectrum. So go to your local hardware store and get you some of the full spectrum light bulbs. Or worst case, go outside. Um, and that way you're going to have a much better idea of exactly what you're dealing with and how the colors really came out. So look it over. Be critical. Um, and often, if you're in a troubleshooting tech support mode, I recommend you save the transfer um, because we may want to look at it together, try to figure out, okay, you know, what exactly went wrong. So for, for the new folks out there, I hope this has been helpful for you. For the experienced ones, um, take this, note it, and see if you can run with it and do better. Um, so this has been David Gross with Condi Systems. Till we meet again. There are so many videos for you to watch, we don't want you to miss out on a single one. So click here to subscribe to Condi TV on our video channel. Click here to like us on Facebook so you don't miss out on anything. And click here to visit this product's webpage.